Welcome back to another session. Today we will continue by looking at the preparation of your balance sheet from the trial balance information. We have completed the income statement already in our previous video, so we're going to be preparing the balance sheet. But what exactly is a balance sheet? A balance sheet is a financial statement that shows the assets, liability, and capital for a business at a specific time. It shows the financial position of the business as opposed to the income statement that shows the financial performance of a business for the year ended at a particular date. So we're going to start off. So as with the income statement, the balance sheet will start off with the company's name. Then we will write the financial statement balance sheet as at 30th of September 2009. I've went ahead and included two, three columns, cost, accumulated depreciation, and the net book value. Your cost column speaks to the cost of your fixed asset historically, what we paid for them originally. But we know that assets tend to depreciate. Over time, they lose their value. So we will accumulate that amount and enter it in the second column and then minus the accumulated from the historic cost to get the actual book value, net book value of that asset at this time. Now we won't be working on that today. We'll be focusing mainly at just putting in the information for the balance sheet. In later videos, work out our depreciation. So let's go through. So we're going to start off with our fixed assets and another name for fixed asset is our non-current asset. We're going to put them in. Looking from our trial balance, we need to find out what are our fixed assets. We have premises, motor vehicles, and fixtures and fittings. However, we use the order of permanence when doing our balance sheet. Order of permanence means that we will list our assets according to the order in which they will stay the longest in the business. So the one that will stay the longest, we will put it first, as opposed to the order of liquidity, where we put the one that can easily turn to cash first. So we're going to go ahead. So we have premises, your fixtures and fittings will stay longer in the business than a motor vehicle. So we put that first, then we have motor vehicle. We'll put in the cost figures, so that's 92,000, 19,000, and 13,400. We're going to add these together. All right, and under the accumulated for now, we will have zero, and we'll also add these as well. underline to show that I added it and then my net book value would be the difference but again seeing that I'm not including it I could have written the figure over but I just want to show you what we would have done on a regular basis and then add these together as well So I'm going to double underline these figures because I don't need to use them in any further calculations. However, the net book value, I will need it. So I will not under, double underline it. All right, so I put my double underline and then I can go ahead. The next thing that I will have in my balance sheet would be my current asset. These are things that the business will own for a shorter period of time, less than a year. So I'll unbold and underline to show that my heading and I'm going to include my current assets. Now the first current asset, because we're using the order of permanence, will be our closing stock. I can find it in my income statement as well as it's normally in the additional note with my trial balance. These are stock that the business still 
has that we have not sold as yet. So they're still asset to the business. So we're going to go ahead and have our inventory. And we're going to include that 44,780. The next thing would be our accounts receivable. Another name for accounts receivable is our debtors. So I'm going to put in my figure 42,560. Then the next one would be cash at bank. If I had cash in hand, I would have written it afterwards, but I do not have any. So I'll just stop at my cash at bank. I'm going to go ahead and add these. I'm sure I underline to show that I'm adding. Sorry about that. So this would be my total current asset. All right. Now I'm going to list my current liabilities. Again, I'm going to bold my headings. Let's expand this. Okay. And right now I only have one current liability and that is my accounts payable, also known as my creditor. Now if I had more, I would have placed the figure here and add it in the first column and then the total I put in my second column. But seeing that I only have one, I can go ahead and write it in the second column. So that's 31,600. I am going to minus it from my current asset, my total current asset. This figure that I get, so 92,446, minus the 31,600. This figure that I get, I'm going to call it my working capital. The, this is the funds that I will have to finance my daily operation and expenses. So to pay bills, I would need a certain amount of funds to do that apart from what I have for my assets, my fixed assets. So I'm going to add this figure to my netbook value total. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and double underline, seeing that I'm finished with this section. Now we're going to do our finance by section. Now the finance by will show where did I get the funds to get all my assets and cover my liabilities. So I'm going to bold and highlight this heading. And then the first option that I will put in is my capital. So my capital figure is 68,843. So I'm going to put it in my last column. Then I'm going to need my net profit figure that comes from my income statement. So add net profit. So my net profit is 121,303. So I'm going to include that underline to show that I'm adding, add these together, and then I have my less drawings. If I didn't have any drawings, I would have just gone straight into my long-term liability, adding my long-term liability, or if I didn't have any, I would have stopped here, and it should be the same as the figure right here. So I have my drawings, so I'm gonna go ahead, and less drawings because this is the amount that the owner would have taken from the business so it will reduce the capital underline and then I subtract minus and if you recognize both are the same so I'm going to go ahead and double underline it so this is how the statement is balance as we are very much aware that asset is equal to capital plus liability that's the accounting equation so our asset must be equal to our capital and our liability 
to be balance. So that's the end of our balance sheet. Again, if you had long-term liability, you would have included it by adding it to the finance buy, and it should be equal to the total that you got for fixed assets and the working capital. If, however, they are not the same, so these figures are not the same, it means that you have done something incorrect. So you would have to go back through and ensure that everything is okay. And if all is well in the balance sheet, the, the figure could be wrong because of the net profit. So you can go into your income statement and ensure that all is well. All the best and thank you for watching. See you next time. Thank you.